In this video, we're going to model a simple curtain model using NURBS tools in Rhino 3D. I'm here in Rhinoceros 7, and I'm going to check my units by typing in units into my command line, which opens my document preferences, and it tells me that my model units are set to inches. I'm going to approach making my curtain by defining a curve or polyline, which in rhinoceros terminology is still a curve. A curve is a term for all line-based elements. I'm going to define a curve for the base, very bottom of my curtain, and then I'm going to use that to make another curve for the top that will be different, and we're going to make a, um, a surface that passes between those curves, that connects those curves. So I'm going to work here in my top view. So I'm going to double click on top to maximize it. And I'm going to draw an, a single line to help me understand how long to make my curtain. So I'm going to draw a line from 0, 0, 0. So I typed in L-I-N-E. Uh, I prefer using the command line than the toolbars, but of course you could use the toolbars or the menus. For the start of the line, I'm going to type in the coordinates 0, 0, 0, which is the center of my Cartesian coordinate system. And then I'm going to turn on my ortho snap at the base of the screen here. And with my cursor extending to the right, I'm going to type in 5 feet, enter. And what that gives me is a endpoint for my line that is at 5 feet. And if I tap enter again, I've concluded my line. So this is just a guide for me <clears throat> to understand how long I want to make my curtain. I'm going to offset this line to determine the depth of the curtain. So I will type in offset and click on distance in the command line. And I want the base of my curtain to be four inches deep as a guide. I'm going to click on this line and then depending on which side of the line that I pick to offset, I'm going to get an indication of four inches below, four inches above. I'm going to click above. And now I have a starting point for how I'm going to sketch out my polyline. <clears throat> so I will use, in fact, I'm going to use a curve tool. So I will type in curve, which is a generic NURBS style curve. It, it interpolates between the points that I click my degree is set to 3, which is the default. That's going to give me a curved line that will work very well for this. If I set the degree to 1, I would get a sharp polygon or polyline, um, but 3 is appropriate. I'm going to turn off my grid snap so I can freely move my mouse. You'll notice with my grid snap turned on, my cursor was locking to the points on my grid. And with it off, I can move my cursor anywhere. I'm going to turn off my ortho as well and even my O-snap. And what I'm thinking is what shape does a curtain take when it reaches the bottom of the floor? And the curtain in my instance is going to be fairly soft, so I'm making it intentionally very smooth and somewhat irregular. And this is going to be the curve that my curtain is going to adhere to at the bottom near the floor. And I'm going to make some moments that are a little bit tighter and some moments that are a little bit softer. I am using my scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll in and out when I need more room, when I need to advance to the right of my screen. So when I get close, let's say here, I'm going to scroll wheel out and if I move my cursor to the left of the screen and scroll wheel out, it is going to expand room to the right. And if now I bring my cursor towards the right of this line and zoom in with my scroll wheel, I get plenty of room to continue my curve. I'm not being particularly careful about how many of these points, these control vertices in NURBS terminology that I draw. In the future, we may find ways of modeling that are, we need to be more careful of the number. And when I reach the end of my curve, I'm going to tap enter on my keyboard. And now 
I will double click again on top and double click into perspective and this is the line, the curve that I just made. I no longer need my guideline, so I will select and delete, select and delete. You'll notice when I've selected, I'm seeing this gizmo here, which allows me to move an object or rotate it, and that is my gumball. And I have my gumball turned on here at the base of the screen. And I want to make my curtain, I think, seven feet, no, let's make it eight feet high. If I were to click and drag on my blue line, my blue arrow of this gumball gizmo, I can restrict my movement up and down. But this has um, moved my line rather than copied it, and I didn't have a specific amount that I had moved, so I'm not clear on whether I've reached eight feet or not. So I'm going to undo with my Control Z. And if instead of clicking and dragging, if I hold down my Alt key on my keyboard and click once, on my blue arrow <clears throat> and type in eight feet, zoom out, I have now made a copy, holding down the Alt key, made a copy of that object. And by clicking and typing in a number, I moved it a very specific distance. I think I'm going to make one more copy to five feet. And my top line, I'm going to use my green scale tool on my gumball, which is this dashed line with a square. And I'm going to click and drag that to make this much tighter because curtains are often fairly tight at the top, depending on how they're gathered, depending on what the structure is for that curtain. And then I'm going to take my line in at five feet and make it just a little bit more narrow. And now I'm ready to create a surface that moves, that connects all three of these. And I can use the command loft, which is one of my NURB surface modeling tools in Rhino. The loft command prompts me for what curves to loft. And I'm going to pick these three curves. I'm going to pick them in sequence from first to second to third, or beginning, middle, end. That is very important, otherwise it will try to connect through in the way that I select them, which if it's not in sequence, is going to create a very strange surface. I'm also going to select them all at the same edge of their, their, um, their curve. So I'm going to select what was the end of my curve. I could also select at the beginning, but I happen to see the three ends here. So I'm going to select one, two, three, press enter. I'm going to accept these defaults of normal and I am not going to simplify my cross section curves. I will say okay. And now when I switch to my shaded view, you can see that I've got a surface that connects directly to that curve at the base, passes through my curve at five feet and ends very tightly gathered at my curve at the top. So this is um, a reasonable starting point for making a curve prop that I could use to populate a scene. Perhaps the final step would be moving to my Layers tab, or my Layers palette, and making a new layer. Let's call this 3D Curtains, and selecting that surface and putting it on the layer 3D's curtains, 3D curtains using my properties inspector. And now I can turn on and off that layer and it keeps all of my curtains organized on a very particular location. Notice, of course, with Rhino that my curves are still here. Um, my surface didn't absorb my curves. My curves are available to make new curtains to put on another layer, or in this case, I think I will select and delete them because I no longer need them. I have my prop surface here for my model. So that's making a simple curtain model using the NURBS loft surface tool in Rhino.